Hey guys, in this video I'll go over the radar for the F5. So before we start, there's a couple controls you need to have binded. The first control is this one here, radar acquisition button. Then you need these two, antenna elevation, tilt control down, and tilt control up. You'll also need these three switches, dogfight switch aft, dogfight switch center, and dogfight switch forward. And lastly, you're going to need to bind your slew switch. You can do this with axes or with buttons. If you want to do it with buttons, you bind these um, four switches here, right RTDC button down, left, right, and up. However, I have done it with axes, so you can come to axis commands and you can see I've done these two, right RTDC button azimuth and right RTDC button range. All right, so let me get into the air to show you how this thing works. All right, so to use the radar, first you gotta power it on. So the power switch is over here. You can see there's off, standby, operate, and test. So off is for off. Standby will give power to the radio, but you won't be able to use it. It just keeps it powered on. Operates will turn it on, you can see here. And test, as far as I know, doesn't do anything. So in DCS, you have to have the radar warm up before you can use it. So it takes about three minutes to warm up. So what you can do is you can either put it to standby, wait about three minutes, and then put it to operate. Or if you want to, you can just go straight to operate and wait about three minutes and it will turn on. If you just put it straight to operate, whenever the radar is warming up, it will look like this. And whenever it's done warming up, it will look like this. However, if you just put it to standby, then it's always gonna look like this no matter what. So you'll know it's ready by after about three minutes have passed, then you can just put it to operate. All right, so let's take a look at the radar screen itself. So this thing moving back and forth is your antenna going back and forth looking for targets. So left and right on the screen is obviously left and right in the air, but up and down in the screen is not up and down in the air. Basically, the bottom of the screen is what's really close to you and the top of the screen is what's far away. So you use this range switch here. You can see there's 40 miles, 20 miles, 10 miles, and five miles too. So if I set it to 40 miles, that means the top of the radar is 40 miles away. And the closer, and the more you go down, the closer it is to you. So in the middle of the screen is 20 miles away and down at the bottom is right in front of me. If you switch the range to 20 miles, then now the top of the screen is 20 miles away and the middle of the screen is 10 miles away. So in the middle of the radar screen, you'll see this little bar here. This is basically the same thing as like your artificial horizon line. It's kind of, it's, the point of it is basically, so if you're looking down at your radar, you can tell if the plane is moving. So you can see if I turn, that horizon line turns. All right, before we get into how to use the radar, let's talk about these little knobs around it. So this one that says pitch just changes the pitch of the horizon line. This is kind of like um, how you can change the pitch on your artificial horizon. There's no reason to mess with this. I would just leave it in the middle. The one that says cursor here changes the brightness of your horizon line. So if you want to get rid of the horizon line, you can just bring the cursor brightness all the way down. This switch that says scale changes the brightness of these scale lines in the background. This brightness switch on the right changes the background brightness for the radar. This switch that says video changes the brightness of your contacts that you pick up on the radar. I'll talk about the radar contacts in a second, but you can see if I bring it down, then they all go away. And this switch that says persistence um, changes how long the contacts stay on the radar. So if you bring the persistence knob all the way up, then all your contacts will stay on the radar for a long time. If you bring the persistence knob down, then um, once they pop on the radar, they'll pop off really quickly. Also, quick note, whenever you're selecting your radar range scale, you can also see a little number here. So you can see 10, 5, 20, and 40. All right, so now how, the, how to actually use the radar. So whenever you see, whenever your radar picks up a plane, it'll show up as a little horizontal bar right here. You can see this bar's moving left, so the plane is flying to the left. If your plane is pointed down, or if you point your antenna down, you'll notice your radar will start to pick up a bunch of random stuff. This is the radar waves hitting the ground and coming back to your airplane. So obviously this is not very useful for us. So you wanna make sure your antenna is not pointed down too much. So let me put my antenna back to the middle. Also a quick note, if you have your antenna elevation bound to buttons on your joystick, it's very sensitive. 
you can see it, even if I just tap it, it goes up a lot. So if you want to fine tune it, you can come over here and you can use your mouse scroll or you can hold left click on it and keep left click held and you can fine tune the elevation. So I put it back to the middle. So you can see all I'm seeing is one little line here. So this is not the ground, this is an actual plane. And you can see now he's moving to the right. So if you want to get a lock on this guy, you have to move your TDC switch or your SLU. Your SLU is these little bars right here. Keep in mind, at 40 miles away, if you have your range set to 40, you can't use the SLU because it doesn't let you lock anything that far. You have to be at 20 miles or closer. So I'm, I'm going to set my range to 20, and you can see now I have the little slew bars I can use. Once again, the slew bars is the TDC switch, which is this switch right here you can see I'm moving right now. So if you want to lock somebody, you put your bars over the little contact, and you, put, you press the acquisition button, which is this red button here. So I put my bars over this guy, and I click the acquisition. And you can see I got a lock on, which means I am locked. And you can see my aiming sight on my display is now locked on and following him. If you want to turn your aiming sight on, you use this switch here. Just make sure it's not an off. So if you want to break a lock, for me the, bro the lock is already broken, but if you wanted to break a lock, you need to remember that dog the dogfight switch we bound in the controls earlier. You press the dogfight switch to the center. And if you, click it, if you click it to the center, that will break a lock. So let me demonstrate that for you. So I'm going to lock onto this guy again, and you can see I got the lock, and if I want to unlock him, I click dogfight uh, center position, and now it unlocks him. One more note I want to go over with the radar is if you try to lock something and you can't get a lock. So you can see there's nothing here, so I'm just going to go ahead and press the lock button. So if you press the lock button, it will go into lock mode, so basically it will go into this super tight scan. Um, and basically, if you can't get a lock, if you see any contacts on your radar, you can move this scan and try to get a lock on them. So for example, you can see this guy right here. I can move it over, and now it got a lock. And then I can click the dogfight switch to the center to unlock it again. All right, so now we'll go over dogfight missile and dogfight gun mode. Um, so we've been pressing the dogfight switch to the center to unlock it, but if you press the dogfight switch to the, to the forward, it goes to dogfight missile mode, and if you press it backward, it goes to dogfight gun mode. So this is basically used for whenever you are really close to somebody, but you just don't have time to mess with the radar down here. So you can just point your plane at them and cl click one button and get a lock. So there's a guy up over here, and let me go over to him. So basically what you do is once you're close enough to him, you basically just point your nose at him and press the dogfight switch forward or backwards. I don't have any missiles right now, so I'll just press it backwards for gun mode. So you can see I got my nose pointed at him, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to click the switch to backwards. And you can see I automatically uh, got a lock. And my sight is not tracking him yet because I'm not close enough, but once I get close enough, you'll see my sight will start tracking him. So you can see my sight has this little uh, range bar now, which means that now it's tracking. So let me demonstrate that for you one more time. This time I'll do dogfight missile mode. So as you can see, all I do is point my sight at him and press the dogfight switch forward. And it got a lock, and now my sight is uh, tracking. And if you ever want to go back to regular radar mode, all you do is you click the dogfight switch to the center. So since I'm behind him, you should be able to see the tracking better now. If I go to dogfight gun mode, you can see now the missile, the, now the sight is following behind him. And this would give you an envelope to shoot your guns. Thanks for checking out this video, and I'll see you later.